Cyberpunk 2077 is a hoot and possibly a holla. And I think a big reason as to why I'm absolutely loving the game so much is the player agency that CD Projekt Red has instilled into this game. And the mission design primarily. Because my god, these things are fun. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 has quite a few different types of missions. There's missions where you may be asked to go and steal something, or kill someone, or kill another guy, or steal something else, or kill another guy, or hack into something. Look, I know it doesn't sound all that impressive, but hear me out. It's all about the accoutrement. All the surrounding intricacies about these gameplay mechanics that make it so fun and rewarding. Not only do you have different play styles and builds that you can go down and unlock, whether it is you want to specialize in hacking, assault weapons, ranged weapons, melee, blunt instruments, sharp blades, mobility, stealth, whatever. All these different playstyles augment how you interface with the world, what challenges or skill checks that you can acquire and that no, not only acquire, but overcome, that fundamentally change how you tackle these missions. Now that's the internal capabilities of your character, but what about the external? What about the level design and the mission design itself that makes Cyberpunk 2077 so much fun in my opinion? Well, it's a very simple rule of thumb. They let the player do what they want. A lot of these missions can be solved in either stealth, non-lethal, or lethal ways. The game may reward you for going down one style compared to the other, but at least in the missions that I have done, the rewards are nothing all that substantial. So if you do just want to go your own way and at your own pace, you can feel free to do that. I know there are some consequences story-wise in terms of major characters, they can even lock you out of Phantom Liberty. But when it comes to the moment-to-moment -moment decisions you make in these missions, and in these gigs and side quests, and just all, all over Night City as a whole, you never really feel like the game is trying to force you to go one way compared to another. You always have the freedom of choice to go off the beaten path, or to utilize a different build or a different strategy to overcome the trial or the adversary. Take, for instance, a gig that I just completed. Now, the idea was that I had to go into this nightclub, and I had to kill this one guy who took a job by a fixer before, but was too bloody in his methodology, and just ended up pissing off a whole bunch of different people. So he was a liability, and the fixer, Dino, didn't want that on his head, so he tasked us to go in and deal with the problem. Now, you go into the nightclub, and you may think, okay, I'll just go up to the guy, kill him, and leave, and you can kind of do that. He has some bouncers in front of him and blocking the doors, but you can just kill them if you want. Just go in, pop him in the head, and leave. Job done. Loot the corpses if you want, and, you know, again, gig done. You get your experience, you get some money, but if you want to, there's a few other ways you can go about this. You can do what I did, or at least try to do, and that is sneak around the place, see what I can hack into, see what enemies I could distract using my hacking abilities what rooms I had access to. I found my way to a security room, knocked out a god in a non-lethal manner, climbed up an air vent, and managed to work my way through the piping above the nightclub, like near the ceiling of it, over the heads of the everybody down below. I could see the guy through a window, and at that moment, I could just shoot him dead if I wanted to, or I could hack him to death. Or, I could continue doing what I was going to do, and that is, continue my way over to him, drop down to a bathroom, take out a camera, go into the room, have a conversation with him, at which point I have now two different ways I can tackle this situation. One, I can just say, okay, cool, look, we're here gonna kill you, we kill him, we kill everyone else, we leave. I can also loot something really powerful in that room, a legendary weapon. Or, I can do what I also try to do, which was convince him to leave Night City instead, which would also complete the gig. I was never prompted to do this beforehand. Dino never suggested that this could happen. It just happened to be a dialogue option that popped up. So I wanted to see both routes. So I made a save file and I did two things. In the first try, I just killed him and I killed everybody. I looted all the corpses, looted the room, and I went away with a sizable chunk of cash and a gig done. Cool, right? It felt good to use my swords and my knives and just dust everybody there who had given me a hard time trying to get into the VIP room before. And I walk out feeling like a badass covered in blood as all the gentle onlookers of the nightclub looked on in horror as to what I just transpired or enacted upon these people. Dino rings me up, says, hey, good job, here's some money, and then job done. So, 
That's route one. That's what could have happened. But then I reverted the save, and I convinced the guy to leave Night City. Because his future was bleak. Because if I didn't kill him, someone else would come and take my place. Either way, his head would roll if he remained in the city. Eventually, he relented and said, Okay, look, screw off, get out of here, I'll leave. So I go back the way I came from, no one else is the wiser, and I walk out the front door, mission complete. But Dino says, Hey, interesting way you tackled that situation. Why don't you go to a near drop box, and I'll leave you a little something extra. And I ended up with about like 4k extra eddies, which is the currency in this game, Euro dollars than I did in the first route. But don't forget, I killed everybody in the first route, which means I also looted the bodies. So if I looted and sold the extra weapons and stuff that I collected, maybe I could have made like another grand or two to bridge that gap just a little bit. But in the grand scheme of things, what, like a couple K? That's not going to be anything significant. You can do that mission either way, and it's viable. Like, you're not gonna miss out on a ton of XP, at least in my experience. You're not gonna miss out on, like, some kind of big reward, because either way, you could just loot the gun that is in there, the big legendary. It is up to you, the player, to, to decide how you want to roleplay in this RPG. And it feels like every mission is kind of like this. Even when it comes to, like, the mini-boss battles you can get around the map with the Cyber Psychos. At the end of them, you can choose if you want them to live or die. Keep them on 1 HP so that someone else can come in and swoop them away, or you can just dust them right then and there. You play how you want to play, and for an RPG, that is honestly pretty rewarding. Now, it's not like Cyberpunk 2077 is the only game ever to have, like, play a choice, and to have these types of choices for their missions. But I do think that the game does them well. And I think in an industry of AAA games that feel so hell-bent on holding your hand and forcing you to walk down a set prescribed path, I love those types of games, do not get me wrong, but it is a nice breath of fresh air to have a game that enables you to just do whatever you want and to roleplay the character you want to be. Baldur's Gate 3 does this, and I think we're really starting to see a growing appreciation for this type of level design and RPG design again. I remember another gig that I did a couple of days ago, where I was tasked to retrieve this guy's eye that he lost because of gambling debts. So I had to go to this bar. Now, I could just kill everybody and go get the eye. I could do that. I could just sneak in, steal the eye, and walk out. Or, I could hack into the guy's computer, find blackmail on the guy, and then blackmail the guy with that blackmail, and force him to give me the eye of his own volition. That's just a random gig you stumble upon. And there's three main different routes you can partake in to get to an end goal, to get to a end point for that gig. It's really cool how the mission design overall is handled in this game. It makes the world more fun and interesting to explore because I know around any corner I could get a mission that allows me to play the way I want to play and impart some kind of aspect or change onto this world of my own design and volition. It's really fun and interesting in that regard, and I find it highly engaging. And again, I'm still extremely early on, so Lord knows what type of missions await me down the line. But it also helps that I feel rewarded for going down my path, like there are legitimate consequences to what build I go for. I didn't specialize in hacking, so a bunch of those little nodes in those bars that I could possibly have hacked into before, I don't really do that. I go for brute force, and negotiation. And there's quite a few times that have popped up in my playthrough where my origin being from the street has enabled me to go along a dialogue option or path that I would not have been able to go with before. It makes my character feel individualized and that the decisions that I make in customizing and building up my character feel weighty and important. And I think that's a great thing. And the game rewards me on a fast enough of a basis, so I always feel rewarded and incentivized to do this side content and these side activities. It just feels like each of these individual components work together in a synergistic whole to create an experience that's really fun and interesting. I kind of want to replay the game after I beat it, walking down a different path with a different build and just seeing how I can tackle all these different situations differently. Like, what if I go full hacking and have all those tools available to me? What if I have tech knowledge that I can leverage to my advantage? So a whole bunch of different things that I could go down to benefit my character down the line. And I think it's handled really well in Cyberpunk 2077, at least so far. But I'll keep you all updated as I continue playing this game. 
So thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Leave a comment down below with what build you are rocking in Cyberpunk 2077 and what wacky thing you have been able to do because of it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and hear your opinions. Stay safe. Have a great day. Go play some video games if you can. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.